We are talking with Matt and we have a few questions for the Chief Zero from Zero huh. to Heroes. Far away. Pardon? Far, Far away. away. Um, your recent political campaign, which unfortunately was not successful, but it started a movement of awareness of Vancouver's digital media and creative screen industries. Where do you see the momentum going? Well, you know, hopefully not to uh, Toronto and Montreal, but uh, it, it, it's a tricky kind of time. On the one hand, we were very successful in doing things like the vote law, which really galvanized people politically that traditionally do not give a damn about politics. But now they see that there's a connection between, you know, their paycheck and their project and what happens politically. So this is a good thing. And you can see the very early threads of this movement taking up in Silicon Valley and even over in Italy, different groups, you know, similar groups to our creative industries, are trying to engage with politics going different ways. So I think this is healthy. I think this is healthy because we're all living in the future. The time goes in just one direction. So we're all living in the future. And these industries are part of our future. And this way of creative expression is part of our culture and society now. So we have to ask ourselves, you know, how do we maintain that sense of purpose when the electoral cycle is very much time-based. Okay. Um, do you see the industry now realizing with um, the, the situation with tax incentives and all of the jobs and uh, creativity heading east, do you feel that maybe now people are ready to sit down and, and play in the same neighborhood and work together as a team to build the industry in BC back to where it should be and well, beyond? Well, I hope so. I hope that would be the case. I think, in a way, the electoral reverse that we saw in British Columbia uh, almost sets people back a bit. Because on the one hand, we had companies and individuals that were connected with our industry actually putting their money on the table, so to speak, like directly getting behind and supporting, you know, an idea and a process, and in this case a political party, to make change. Well, now that party didn't win. And so I think a lot of these companies are kind of saying, oh, you know, we maybe, we thought this was a bet that would pay off, and it hasn't paid off. And I think there's some logical reshuffling of people's expectations to ask, well, how do we engage with any level of government. We sort of tried this and it didn't work out and it should have worked out maybe. So what do we do now? So, But I think what I'm hoping is that because you just open that door, the door stays open. Because I think what's more important is regardless of which party is in power politically, because parties change all the time. We have different levels of government. I think the what really matters is what you said earlier, is that people recognize that if this is an industry worth maintaining and growing, then you need to engage with all the different layers of that process. People in the creative industries tend to be apolitical. We tend to think, oh, these guys are politics, what do they know? They don't know our space or us. They've never held a control in their hands for crying out loud. Well, you know, they have other things they hold in their hands. There's an of power. So it, it's time for us, I think, to maintain that idea that it's important. We try to find different places to engage. I'm hoping, you know, speaking of the Vancouver scene, that you see somebody appear, if not on the provincial level, but on the municipal level, maybe, that could actually help advance that agenda. Because we need a champion. We need somebody who is in a position to move things forward. And by champion, I don't need lobbyists. You know, we need a champion. And right now, I don't know that we have one. Well, we have one on the federal level with James Moore. Yes. If we can find someone who is similar, who understands the value of our industry and all of its sectors, mm. then I think that the industry will grow again. Yeah. But in the meantime, we have a huge splintering of associations. That well, they're, they're trying to weld them together now in this idea of we create BC. Which, you know, I know the people involved, and they're good folks, and they're well-intentioned, and that's not a bad start. And then you have, like, the other organizations, DigiBC, and then, you know, there's some talk that maybe there should be a ministry just for the creative industries. These are all good ideas, but again, I, I think without that one person who's got the clout to pull it forward, uh, we're probably not going to see a whole lot happening, unfortunately. I mean, if you look at Montreal, they have champions there, and there's a unity, I think, at all levels of government and academia. Uh, Toronto, Ontario, they're getting there. They're, they're working hard, they understand the value of the same time. 
that they think we need to replace what was a physical manufacturing industry with kind of a, an industry of the mind, creative industry. Uh, but for some reason in British Columbia, we, we just don't seem to have people that care about that. And it's baffling to me because one would think this is an industry that people would jump on to be a champion because the jobs are, you know, cleaner, greener, more creative, better paid. They attract top talent from all over the world to places like this uh, to help make things happen. And we're defining the future. But for some reason, it seems in British Columbia that no one's really grabbed onto that yet. I look at pipelines, I guess. But you get the future you invest in. Uh, the last time SIGGRAPH was in Vancouver, I found it a little disturbing that there wasn't a stronger BC presence. And that's another, I feel, failing in our local yeah. industry on not grabbing the opportunities. Because again, everything is very splintered. And do you see the industries being able to actually put their egos aside and work together? Maybe, I'll give you a maybe. But part of the problem with Vancouver industry is sort of a modern 21st century version of the branch plant mentality. So you have Facebook coming to Vancouver, and you have Amazon, and you've got Pixar, and you've got all these world-class companies with world-class talent attached. Arts, but they don't see themselves as being indigenous or organically coming out of Vancouver. They happen to be in Vancouver for all reasons. So I think that plays into the lack of cohesion in the community. Because if you look at, let's say, the Montreal scene, yes, they started with a tentpole from France, Ubisoft, and, but they created something wonderful around it. And Toronto's trying to do the same thing. New York, Silicon Valley, there's a sense of an organic community that springs up. We have a lot of people that are, you know, that allegiance rents to Silicon Valley or to Seattle. And that's that's okay. It just means that the big players that are in town don't necessarily feel the same connection that let's say a Hootsuite might have, or let's say an Omni Film might have, right? Uh, or even an Esau Games. So we need to redefine what that community is. And I, I think unfortunately, I don't know that politically is the way we can actually here's reach the start necessarily. It seems paradoxical. But I think once you get that sense of identity, then you get the attraction that translates politically. I think you try to start with it being a politicization. You know, we had a moment where that was sort of happening in May, and now that moment's passed, and now I think we need to find another way to re-engage because, again, fundamentally we're not political people. <laughs> fundamentally we're not political people. I, we, we, I all, we all watch House of Cards, but you know, we don't see that translating into our daily lives. And it's a pity because we had that moment there where we were this close to making that sense of an alliance between this segment of society and sort of the mainstream political levers. And that would have been something rare and unique. It's a pity it didn't happen. It doesn't matter whether it was me or something else, by the way. Yeah. It needed to happen. Yeah, I, I think that, that you really, really started something. And I have a strong feeling that we need to grow it and continue it. Mm, you're right. And hopefully we can find that champion or a pair of champions or a trio of champions and somehow find a way to bring the industry together mm. and unite it. Yeah. Because sometimes I feel like we're Horton Hears a Who. And okay. we're the Who's in Whoville. <laughs> and nobody's hearing us. Mm. And uh, and yet everybody's consuming what we do. Well, that, that's the ironic thing. And everyone, if you ask people, they all say, they like, question, this is the future, if we're manufacturing the future, right here in Vancouver. And the stuff we're working is world class. But, you know, people just seem to say it's They don't seem to think it's real for some reason. So I don't know. There's a, a, a break between the two. It's cognitive dissonance, dissonance in some ways. And I don't know, maybe we have to lose electronic cars before people actually look and go, oh my god, there's a problem here. This is a brand guy who's spoken up for our industry. He deserves some props. Nice. That's my agent. He gets a cut.